Is it possible to build a theremin with only one component? I'm talking about an AT Tiny 85, of course. This thing is so versatile, it seems there's almost nothing it can't do. But a theremin with no other components? It's not going to be easy. As you probably know, a theremin works through capacitance. Your hand and the antenna form a variable capacitor which is used in an oscillator circuit. Frequency is then going to depend on where your hand is, but to get that frequency into the audible range, you have to heterodyne it with another fixed oscillator. This is mostly because the capacitance we're talking about is tiny. Now your Atmel chip has something called capacitive sensing, which is intended for things like building touch keypads. But when you touch a surface, its capacitance changes by several nanofarads, which is huge compared to the capacitance of me waving my hand several inches away from a surface. There, that's fractions of a picofarad, femtofarads even. Well, there's a way of measuring capacitance using a microcontroller that's quite well known, with a resistor and an analogue comparator. You slowly charge the capacitor through the resistor, and measure how much time it takes to get to a fixed fraction of fully charged. And if you've got an analogue to digital converter, a slight variation on that is to slowly charge a capacitor, wait a fixed amount of time, and then measure the voltage it's reached. To measure nanofarads, you probably want a mega ohm. Picofarads, tens of mega ohms. Well, I was playing around with this, trying to come up with a way of measuring smaller capacitances, and a thought occurred to me. How many mega ohms is the impedance of a tri-stated input? This is a CMOS device, of course, so when you select what your inputs and outputs do, there are little FETs which switch those peripherals in and out. But a transistor, even in the open state, is still going to have some leakage current. This is going to vary from pin to pin, it's going to vary from chip to chip, but that doesn't actually matter because we don't need a calibrated measurement of capacitance. We only need relative differences. Now, don't get your hopes up too high. This is very much an unfinished product, but here's the prototype. There are a couple of serious issues with it. First of all, the reading is very noisy. And it's not that I didn't have faith in the DSP abilities of an 8-bit chip with no multiplication, but I couldn't bring myself to try and filter it at all. So it sounds like we're playing theremin through a hailstorm. Secondly is the grounding issue. Basically, it works much better if you wear a wrist strap, which is really disappointing because the whole idea of a theremin is it's an instrument you play without physical contact, and if you're connected to it, then it kills that. But with the wrist strap, it does have more range and less noise. It also doesn't have this third problem, which is the sound of the detection pulse making it through to the speakers. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a moment. But here we are. Um, this is 5 volt coming in. This is going to the speakers. This is my pitch antenna. And this is my volume antenna. Um, I'm going to connect this black wire to the mains ground from the oscilloscope lead here, um, and I'm not going to wear a wrist strap. All right, here we go. Okay, now with the wrist strap. This does seem to depend on temperature, humidity, time of day. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it that at one point I was getting more than a usable octave. Um, but what's actually happening here? I can tell you what I'm doing, but in terms of the physics, I'm not entirely sure. We used two pins to make a measurement. The antenna pin and another pin. 
at first we set both of them as outputs and ground them. Then we tri state the antenna pin and set the other pin high. And if there's leakage between them, then the antenna pin's voltage will start to rise. And we wait a certain amount of time, take an analog reading, which will correspond to its capacitance. But here's the weird thing when I move my hand closer to the antenna, the, re the reading goes up. Now surely if I'm increasing the capacitance, the reading should be lower, so I'm a bit stumped as to how this works. When I connect the wrist strap, the best place to connect it to by far is PB2, which is the pin that's going up and down. So this was suggesting that maybe it was sending a square wave through my body that was being transmitted to the antenna via RF. But it still works without the wrist strap, and with that pin connected to mains ground. In that situation, power supply is floating, uh, isolated, and the whole chip floats up and down with each reading. Um, so I don't know if it was maybe the relative capacitance of the circuit, or maybe it's transmitting RF and it's being variably absorbed by me. I really don't know. The plot thickens. I've just noticed that with the PWM in differential output mode and the circuit grounded, if I touch the metal surface of my laptop, the pitch range reverses. So, I admit this is not yet at the point where anyone would describe it as pleasant to listen to. I actually made this about six months ago, I forgot about it. Um, I was only reminded by the Google Doodle the other day. And, to be honest, it's not actually as bad as I remember it. Uh, I felt pretty discouraged at the time. Um, I even made this cute little battery-powered version to try and build up the enthusiasm. But for whatever reason, uh, this is even noisier than the original. Um, probably to do with the linear regulator, maybe I didn't use the right capacitors or something. But I'm certain, with a little thinking, and possibly a better understanding of what's going on, we should be able to take the reading without having to float the circuit up and down, which would totally eliminate that whine. And also the hurricane noise, uh, it's actually phase noise, and you know, each reading is being used to increment a pointer to a wavetable lookup. I'm sure with some averaging and interpolation, we should be able to totally sort that out. So there's um, more information about this probably on mitzella.com. Uh, if you have any ideas uh, as to how it works or you want to try it out, please get in touch.